Now, one of the really important aspects of uh, the economic turmoil at the moment is the interest rates and the effect it has on people's mortgages. Uh, Homeowners, many are already worried about paying their mortgage and it could be that there's worse to come. So we're going to get some advice on this now from Andrew Montlake, who joins us, mortgage expert and MD of Corico. Andrew, another extraordinary day. What did you make of it? Well, it's um, it's all about uncertainty, really. I mean, there's, a, as you said, another extraordinary day, more ramifications for the markets and, and therefore, by definition, for the mortgage world. Um, we just need to have some closure on this once and for all in terms of certainty. Um, we have seen that because there's been yet another U-turn, uh, even before the U-turn, actually, when it was leaked that perhaps she was going to U-turn on a couple of points from the from the mini budget, we saw swap rates ease slightly. So we have seen some easing in the cost of borrowing for lenders, but not dramatically, crucially yet. So at the moment, we sort of are where we are, and, and there's still a lot of um, waiting around until we actually get this um, mythical Office of Budget Responsibility report into the rest of the um, mini budget things that are that are coming down the line. And, and until we get that point, um, I think the markets will continue to be nervous. And, and Liz Truss in her press conference today didn't didn't really do enough to show that she was. Um, really in control of the situation. With mortgage rates, uh, what a lot of people have been saying is they were always going to go up at some point yeah. in any way. Um, although for a long time, uh, people were saying that, you know, they're not going to go up. But 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 in, I guess it was inevitable. So how much has this been made worse by the mini budget and everything that's happened in the last few weeks? Um, it was inevitable, and we've seen this, for, and we actually we've talked about it, and uh, the whole market's talked about it for ages. We we always knew we were in an artificially low interest rate environment, um, but the Bank of England were doing their bit. They were they were increasing rates slowly and steadily, um, but all the estimations that I've seen and from our, my personal experience is that I think the mini budget alone has probably added. Two percent onto the cost of mortgages just in the last three weeks or so, directly as a consequence of this. And what are you seeing with your customers? What what, what is happening uh, at the sharp end? Um, well, customers are, are, are rightly a little bit concerned. They there were a lot of media reports that lenders weren't honouring rates and all of that kind of thing. The good news is that lenders are honouring rate. So if you've got an application in, if you've got a mortgage offer, you needn't worry. Your application and your mortgage rate is is safe. Um, but a lot of people are coming to the end of their fixed rate that they're on at the moment in, in the next um, six months or a year. And they might be paying, for example, £500 a month on a one and a half percent fix and now they're staring down the barrel of fixed rates at five and five and a half percent even closer to six percent which puts a massive strain on them because they're looking at monthly mortgage payments of about five six seven hundred pounds a month more than they've been used to paying and on top of the energy price rises that's that's a big ask for a lot of people so we're working with them to try and calm the situation and and try and see what are their steps that we can make to help with that and and help make their mortgage payments not that much, um, not that difficult for them. And what kind of help is there? Presumably there aren't bargain fixed rate deals out there anymore. What, What can you do if you feel now you are overextended? Um, There are a range of things you can do, and I I will caveat this by saying this is not normal advice. This is is a a moment in time, and and it's about trying to do the best for 
to help clients in these situations. So, for example, you could, if you're on a repayment mortgage, potentially there's you could put part or all of your mortgage onto an interest-only basis, which reduces the payments. Of course, that means you're not paying off the capital, so you have to have a plan in place for that or a moment in time where you can actually get back to a repayment mortgage. You could extend the term if um, age allows you to. So if you've got 15 years left on your mortgage, potentially you can extend that to 20 or 25 years. Again, that elongates the um, mortgage payments and reduces the payments. Um, or you could look at an offset mortgage if you've got some savings that you can use to, again, bring those payments down. In fact, we've even seen a couple of um, people looking at actually capital raising more to put into a a bank account which actually ensures that they have the money to pay off the mortgage over the next two years or so. So there's a range of things that can be done, but it's about having a sensible discussion with a professional to make sure you're not just jumping in and doing something that isn't going to help you, but you're thinking about what actually is going to help you. So do you think that people have, in fact, overextended themselves or been lent too much? Because weren't they meant to be affordability tests in place to take account of any potential jumps in mortgage rate interests it's sorry yeah in mortgage interest rates yeah i think um i think actually banks have been lending prudently i mean this this isn't a situation that we saw in uh 2007 2008 um and all lenders have been doing stress tests and they've been stressing at around three percent above whatever the uh variable rate was at that time which tended to come out at about seven percent so in the most part this should be stress tested and actually people should be able to afford it but it's not just mortgage rates, Clive. It's it's on top of increased energy prices, on top of they might have taken out other loans, they might have taken out credit cards. So the interest rates on those are going up. The cost of buying food is going up. So everything is going up around them. And that's why there's an issue. And what do you think this might do to house prices and, and the market generally? Uh, that's a million dollar question. I think <laughs> if you, if you logically follow it through, then house prices should weaken. And I, and I use the term weaken rather than fall dramatically. I still don't think there's going to be a major house price crash. I think you could see house prices. I think you will see house prices flatten. Certainly you won't see the levels of growth we've seen over the past um, year or so. And you might in some areas, and it will be area specific, see a 5 to 10% softening of house prices next year. But to put that into perspective, since the pandemic, house prices have gone up 10, 12 percent a year. So they're only really falling back down to the levels they were. So I wouldn't term that a, a property crash. And also the house, uh, house prices are still underpinned by a lack of supply. And in high demand areas, as I say, I think you'll see house prices plateau and flatten, but not fall. Uh, last time we spoke, it was about stamp duty, um, yeah. which was getting headlines. I mean, that all seems pretty minor in comparison to what's going on now. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think the stamp duty uh, changes are very minor in the grand scheme of things. Um, they will help first-time buyers. And, and actually, if you're looking at um, becoming a first-time buyer, then you could argue that actually the next six, 12 months is a good time to buy because you've got a bit of extra stamp duty help. You might see a softening of prices. And actually, I think mortgage rates, if they do settle a little bit, could even creep down a touch. And if you're going into a, um, a mortgage market now and you can afford the payments at this level, then I think you're going to be set. Do you think Liz Truss's statement today will do anything to stabilise things or indeed stabilise her job? Um, my own personal opinion is no. And I think if you look at the um, the initial market reactions, they haven't been convinced either. Um, I think it was it was quite a a, a weak um, press conference rather than someone coming out fighting for what they believe in. And um, I think, in my humble opinion, I think 
the Conservative Party should be looking to replace her as well. Andrew, thank you. Andrew Montlake there, a mortgage expert, MD of Corico. What do you feel about that? Are you affected by that? Are you looking at a mortgage and thinking I'm going to end up having to pay two, three times what I currently pay? Could this actually be good for the housing market in some small way that uh, it corrects some of the ridiculously high prices? 0345 6060 973.